We are on the road with Noble Outfitters. We're in Tulsa, Oklahoma at Drysdale's Western Wear. And we're gonna go back and talk to Mr. Jim Sweer, who's co-owner of the store, and he's gonna explain to us how they keep 100,000 pairs of jeans in inventory. That's right, 100,000 pairs of jeans. Come on back, let's take a look. In the mid-1800s, America was pushing west and expanding at a rate unknown to any previous civilization. Americans pursued their dreams and unlimited opportunity, but they needed food, equipment, seeds, and tack to press on beyond the established cities and towns already settled. Out of this demand, a new retailer was born, the General Store, who handled everything a westward family would need to survive. Today, these retailers provide rural Americans the same materials, service, and expertise that made them invaluable over 150 years ago. Join Noble Outfitters as we rediscover the retailing backbone of America. Hear their story in their own words, how they've not only survived, but actually thrived in the modern world. Come along as we go On the Road with Noble Outfitters. Here we are, we got both owners, Hey, Dan. Co-owners, Jim McClure and Sigmund Schreer. How you doing, Dan? My pleasure, sir. Having a great time just walking through a sea of blue jeans. <laughs> Seriously, 100,000 pairs of jeans? 100,000 pairs. That's crazy. I mean, you must have every fit completely anybody could possibly need. We try to fit them from small to large, big to tall, or small to tall. Absolutely. So, 100,000 pairs of jeans and about every kind of brand there is out there. And you know, it's interesting for me, I wore jeans all through school, you know, I mean, we all did. And now I, I still wear them, you know, and I'll always wear them. So it's one of those pants that just like, doesn't seem to ever go away. It's not gonna go away. It's just part of our heritage, wearing blue jeans. And it started in America, right? Did Absolutely. The, the very original jean, Dan, was the Levi 501. It was invented in 1873 by Levi Strauss. Levi was a Bavarian immigrant that came to the United States in the mid 1800s. And when the California gold rush started, he went to California with the intention of manufacturing tents for the miners. But when he got there and talked to the miners, what he was told is that we need a trouser, which is what they called them back then, that'll hold up in the kind of conditions that we're working. And traditional fabrics just wouldn't do that. So Levi ordered a serge fabric from Nimes, France. It's manufactured in Nimes, France. And so with broken English, you would order serge de Nimes. And that's where the word denim comes from when you say denim. From France. From France. That as it, the word became Americanized, it evolved into denim. <laughs> so and that was 1873. This jean was buttonfly, and it still is today. Um, the reason it was a buttonfly is that the zipper wasn't invented until 1917, and really wasn't used in clothes until 1937. So buttonfly was just the, the nature of, the, of anything in trousers. And also, that still, that same pant, that was made then is the same pant that's being made now. That's right. It's virtually the same pant today. This is the one that you gotta you gotta wash it and shrink it to your fit. Right, right. It's got rivets on the pockets. Levi Strauss uh, owned half the patent on that. And then this is their famous trademark. The old uh, logo with the two horses trying uh, trying to pull a pair of pants apart. Pull a pair of jeans apart. And they couldn't do it. And you can't do it. So, I love it. But, but yet yeah, for a product that lasts 140 years is pretty amazing. That's pretty amazing. Yeah. yeah that's longer than Coca-Cola, I think. <laughs> yeah, it could be. Yeah. <laughs> well, we're going to get into how many boots you have in just a minute, and I'm going to ask you a little bit more about the story of Drysdale's and how the whole thing got started and how the name came about, which from what I understand isn't really from Drysdale's, it's from Dry, and we want to hear a little bit about more about that story okay. here in just a few minutes. Okay. We're on the road with Noble Outfitters and I have just seen an inventory of 100,000 pairs of blue jeans and I just got the whole denim story about how denim even got its name from Jim McClure here, co-owner of Drysdale's Western Wear in Tulsa, Oklahoma. And I can tell you, they have every size you could possibly need. They have got this size and they have this size. Perfect. So Jim, also, you guys have a tremendous amount of footwear and Western boots. And I want you to tell me a little bit about the Western boot inventory. Well, we stock about 45,000 pair of boots, Dan. We have a, a very large 
men's western boot area here. We have... Now, I didn't misunderstand you. How many boots? 40, about 45,000. <laughs> 45,000 right. pairs of boots. Right. It's, I always say this is the largest boot department in the world, and no one has ever <laughs> argued with me on that. <laughs> but we have a, a big men's western boot department, we have women's western boot department, and then we have work boot department with steel toe, soft toe, every kind of work boot that anybody could want. Uh, that's a big category for us as well. Tell me a little bit about your philosophy here. Your, your customers just feel so comfortable here. I, I see the people walking around and spend time in the store, the way your employees take care of the customers. Tell us about the story behind Drysdale, the story behind customer service and retailing, the way you've learned it. Well, we consider ourselves a, des a destination shopping uh, store. Uh, people will drive 100 to 200 miles to, to come here because they know when they get here, they're going to see the best selection of boots anywhere in the state or the Midwest. They're going to see the best selection of denim jeans anywhere in the state or the Midwest. So, and they know if they want two or three pair of jeans in one size, we're, we're going to have that as well. So we're, we're a destination store. We're fortunate. We have a lot of good customers and we get a lot of tourists. That people come to Oklahoma, they want to see a Western store. And, uh, we're grateful for that customer. Tell well. me a little bit about the story, Drysdale's, because I understand Drysdale's came from Mr. Dry, right. not from Mr. Drysdale's, but Mr. Dry, and you actually knew Mr. Dry. Yeah, the four of us, plus Mr. Dry, that started this company in 1981, worked for Mr. Dry at a company called Shepler's in Wichita back in the early 70s. He sold that company in 1976 and retired. Uh, he moved to Hot Springs, Arkansas, and started a racehorse business. And they called, uh, he and his wife called that farm Drysdale's. And so when we, five years later, he said he wanted to come out of retirement. He was 72 years old. And uh, we, we said, we'd, we'd like to if you want to. And so uh, he, he's really our mentor. And he's the one that gave us the secret. So when you were young, you were working at Shepler's for Mr. Dry. Right. And how old were you when you started in retail? Well, I was 16 when I started. I was in college when I worked at Shepler's for Mr. Dry in Wichita, 30 when we opened here. So, so he was he was definitely your mentor. Yeah, absolutely. Of how to work a retail store. Yeah, and people would say to him, Mr. Dry, how are you so successful? What's your secret to success? And he would say, I'll tell you, it's no secret. It's just hard work, yeah. plain and simple. And he had grown up in the Depression, and uh, men that came out of that era, uh, like nothing better than to get up in the morning, put on a coat and tie, and go to work. Well, you know, anybody that came out of the Depression, came out of the Dust Bowl, which was this area, right. you know, they have got a certain sense of work ethic that we'll never, we'll never see again in this country. We've become soft, really, after that. I mean, those, those folks know what it was to actually do without and be without and scrape and scrimp and get along. Absolutely. And uh, they're great mentors because those folks really can give you a great idea of how to take care of a customer. When a customer needs something, you, you don't say anything except now, you know, right. you're on it. You go get it because you, you appreciate that customer. Well, it's great that you were able to get that mentorship from somebody that was an expert retailer and carry it through until now and, and, and here's where we are today. It's, it's, I'm, I'm very fortunate to have had that experience and it's worked out well for, for all of us here. Well, I'd like to look at the rest of the store. I know you've got a couple of other people that man a couple of the other departments in the We'd store. Like to show you. So yeah. I think I'm gonna meet Leanne next okay. and she's gonna show me around the women's department. Let's go meet her. Yes, sir, thank you for your hospitality. Yeah, I really appreciate Our it. Our pleasure. We're on the road with Noble Outfitters. Next up, we're gonna meet Leanne and go through the women's department. Oh, I love this store. Look at this. Look at these little baby jeans. Look at this. So cute. You gotta get me a pair of those. I just want a pair just to have. This store is amazing. Oh, yeah. We gotta have the toys. Every farm store's gotta have the toys. The kids can pick up some toys. I love it. Get the tractor. All right, so let's go into the women's department. We're gonna see Leanne. Hi, Leanne. Hi. How are you? Very good. Thank I've you. I've heard you have a very impressive women's wear section here. We do. I, I've been so impressed with the whole store. You know, I mean, the, the tremendous amounts of inventory. Are you talking about 100,000 pairs of jeans? I mean, that's crazy. Yeah, isn't that crazy? And 45,000 pairs of boots. So, how are you going to top that? What do you got over here in the women's wear section? Well, you know, again, we're known for our jeans. So, we have lots of jeans across from your mainstream, your western. You know, we want to fit any customer that walks in the door. And also, what kind of activities they're involved in. If they're involved in rodeo or work, it doesn't matter. We want to be able to, to fit that. Yeah. Now, what have you seen happening when it comes to, you know, there's, there's a big change going on lately 
with the whole yoga pants, you know, the active stretch wear. pants, active wear, yes. you know, less constructed, you know, how's that been affecting your business or do you have some of that in your business? We do. We have um, a little bit of that and because we're seeing that more out in the market, we're definitely um, expanding our ladies department with that. Um, it helps that our western companies are starting to put that in their lines as well. So um, we're able to keep, you know, getting those products that our customers are wanting. Now you also have a uh, embroidery department. We do. So if somebody wanted to come in, and I mean I know you have our beautiful shirt we on do. there, and you put your own name on it and That's whatever, right. but if teams wanted to put their name on a jacket or or whatever, you guys could do that for them right here? We do, and um, one of the organizations we do a lot of that for is NBHA. So um, we house it all right here in-house. Um, Jim, who uh, does that for us, um, they he does it every day. It, it stays active all the time. That's great. How long have you been here with the store? I've only been with Drydells a year and a half. Okay. It's been the best year and a half of my life. You enjoy being here. <laughs> I huh? do. It's um, a great company. It's because it's family owned. Um, you, you feel like you're walking into a family, I mean, just family environment every yeah. day. You know, one of the things that we're kind of out celebrating is going around the country, visiting farm and ranch stores mm -hmm. and Western Wear stores mm -hmm. and talking to people and they're all so friendly. Right. You know, I mean, it's just a, it's, it's a, it's a matter of hospitality right. that they take from home and put into the store. Absolutely. And the employees have that same hospitality and that same feeling towards their customers. Yeah. And it's just, a, it's just a fun thing to, to celebrate, you know, and yeah. to see and to understand. It's, it's just part of America. Well, and we, we hopefully we um, pride ourselves on that here. When we hire people and the people that we have currently, uh, we definitely want to make sure they're always taking care of our customers and feel at home when they come in here, make them feel, you know, they they're not in a hurry to shop and um, they can just feel like they can if they needed their opinion or just need help with anything we're here to help them that's great that is great well it's a pleasure meeting you, pleasure to meet you. thank, thank you, you for coming. and thank you for showing us around and thank you for selling the noble products yes yes we love it we're on the road with noble outfitters we'll be right back don't go away when we come back we're going to visit with the Shatswell kids Welcome back. We're on the road with Noble Outfitters and we're going to do my favorite segment of the show, the Noble Kids of the Week. This time it's Kids of the Week, not just Kid of the Week. We've got the Shatswell family here. What's your name, young man? Brayton Shatswell. Brayton? Your name, sweetheart? Mr. Shatswell. Mr. Brista. Brista. Braxton Shatswell. And Braxton. Okay, the Shatswell team. All right. So, we want to know a little bit about you guys. So, uh, how old are you? Eight. Eight? Nine. Nine? Eleven. And eleven. Okay, so which one of you is a horseback rider? Or do you ride horses? You, I ride horses. You ride horses? You ride horses? And you ride horses. You ride horses? What's your horse's name? Cookie. Who? Cookie. Cookie. And why Cookie? Because he likes to eat cookies. Cookie likes to eat cookies. I like that. How about you, sis? What's your horse's name? Freckles. Freckles. Well, you got a few freckles yourself. You're cuter than a bug, though. And how about you, brother? Jazzy. Jazzy. Jazzy, Freckles, and Cookie. All right. Well, that's some cool names for some horses. And just because you have horses, it's not all fun and games, right? I mean, if you have horses, you've got you to do some cleanup. You got to take care of the feed horses. Them. You got to feed them. Tell me about that. Tell me what you do. Well, I do the poles and barrels on, on horses. So you barrel race your horse? I love it. And sis, what do you do? Barrel race and poles. Barrel race and poles. And brother? I barrel race poles and I just now started trying to rope off of them. Okay. And what about what about chores around the house? I mean, who who's the hardest working from you guys? Uh, you're the hardest worker. So you help out around the house more than these guys. Yeah? Do you get paid for that? Mom and dad give you a little something? No, yeah. but they feed you, right? They feed you pretty good too. I see that little belly you got there. And well, how come you say you're the hardest worker and they're not? Because they usually like sit around and all that. Oh, oh, oh really? So sis, what's that all about? So you're just sitting around and brother's doing all the work? Do you agree with that? Yeah. Oh, oh, you do agree with that. Well, I guess that's a girl's privilege sometimes to sit around and let the boys do the work. How about brother though? How come he's sitting around not doing the work? He just likes 
playing on his phone and all that. Oh, he's doing too many of those video games, huh? He's got to get outside more and do some work. Well, I want to I want to really talk about this debate here now of who's the best worker because working is really important. It's it's a really important thing to you as as a youngster because I, I tell this to all the kids that I meet. Uh, for me, I started working when I was very young, and and I think it's a very important thing. Do you know that the average age of someone going to work in this country is 18 years old? I mean, how old are you again? Eight. Eight years old and you're working, right? And you're out there helping the family and doing some things. Could you imagine 10, 10 years from now before you got your first job? I mean, that's not good. So really, you learn three ways. You learn at home, you learn at school, and you learn by working. So I gotta get you two guys working a little harder. So we wanna talk a little bit more about this debate. Now, why is brother the hardest worker? Why is little brother the hardest worker? How come do you think you're the hardest worker? Because I like listening and all that. You like listening to your dad and having him tell you what to do. And that's a beautiful shirt you got on. You know those shirts are the generation shirts. That means your dad can have the same shirt as you have and you guys can kind of look alike. Do you like that? You like looking like dad? He's a pretty good guy. And have you, have anybody won anything? Have you guys done anything where you've won something? And you I've have to won a knife, knife holder. You won a knife holder doing what? Doing barrels. Doing bar Doing roping. Really? I roped him in under a second. Roped it under a second. Wow. A calf in under a second. Roped a calf in under a second and won a knife set. Mm -hmm. Very cool. And who else won something? You want something too, sis? What'd you win? Belt. You want a belt? Well, a belt buckle and... A belt buckle and what, what was your event? Mutton busting. Mutton busting. I love it. Okay. And what did you do? I won a belt buckle for mutton busting. You want a belt buckle for mutton bus and take a look at that. Now that's a doozy. And you're eight years old. Well, it's been a pleasure talking to you guys today and learning more about what you're doing with your, with your school and with your uh, rodeoing, whatever. And one of the things I'd like to tell you more than anything is just, you gotta help at home, you know? You gotta help mom and dad out. You gotta help with the animals and work hard around the the, the farm and, and keep everything going and, and uh, be a good person. I mean, that's, that's really an important thing. You guys think you're gonna do that for me? All right, I appreciate it. I appreciate meeting you. You guys are outstanding. Thank you very much for coming and seeing me. And uh, what do you think about this toy section here? That's I think pretty, it's awesome. Yeah, they got some pretty cool stuff. Yeah. Okay, I'll tell you what, you've all done a really good job. So I think I'm gonna give all of you a pick of whatever toy you'd like here, and I'm gonna buy that for you so you can take it home and remember me. Does that be good? All right, thank you very much for spending the time with me. I appreciate it. Stay tuned, we'll be right back with On the Road with Noble Outfitters. We're gonna be trying some homemade lasagna. We're back with On the Road with Noble Outfitters. And every week we'd like to put an ending to our show by sharing a recipe with all of you out there and all the different trips that we've made around the country of some wonderful recipes from around this great country. Today, we are with Barbara Bellotti. Hello, Barbara. Hello, how are you? And she's gonna share with us her homemade lasagna and peach cobbler. And I'm noticing a few things about the, the lasagna it's not a typical lasagna because, you know, I'm a chef, you know, 25 years. I, I didn't tell you that ahead oh, of time. Oh, no, you didn't. <laughs> okay. 25 years I've been a chef, but I'm telling you, I haven't seen the lasagna put together with pasta, with the cut pasta. And also on your cobbler, it's, it's a little bit like what we call a peach betty, you know, where it's mm -hmm. like got a cake cooked right. into it. So we're going to learn a little bit more about that. So tell us about the lasagna recipe first. Well, when my husband and I were first married, um, he was in the Air Force and so was my dad and we were stationed in England. And we would go to London and spend the weekend and just down the uh, street from the hotel where we stayed, there was a little Italian restaurant and he absolutely loved their lasagna. I tried to find out how it was made. The waiter spoke very little English and the chef spoke none at all. So we kind of had an interesting conversation figuring out <laughs> this was made and this was the result well that was a good recipe that you got your hands on because that is absolutely delicious that's a meat sauce 
It is a meat sauce. They usually typically in the north of Italy make it with a brown sauce and a bechamel sauce. They have no tomato sauce at all. Okay. And my husband likes the tomato sauce flavor, so I just kind of put it together. And they typically use a spinach pasta rather than a white pasta like we do here in the States. So you've got a spinach pasta, and you've got some white pasta in there too, or just spinach pasta? Yeah, just spinach. Spinach pasta, you've got your, your ground beef and your it's, tomatoes. It's actually um, Italian sausage. Oh, it's a, all of it's Italian sausage? Mm -hmm. It's okay. very mild it's though. It's a sweet Italian sausage. It's like very taste, not too much of the spiciness from Italian sausage. It's okay, mild. I love that, I love that. Okay, so how long does this take you to prepare? I usually fix the sauce the night before because we all know that. That takes the, that takes the time. Well, and it, it, to me it just tastes better and, it, and the flavors melt better if you let it sit overnight. I like it. And I've fixed the sauce the night before and then I, as I'm boiling the noodles, I heat the sauce up a little bit and build it and throw it in the oven and it takes 30 minutes to heat. Ah, great, that's great. Okay, and tell me a little bit about your peach cobbler. Um, this was um, from my mother's recipe box, whatever, and I don't know where she got it from. It is called a floating cobbler, and it you make a batter of milk and sugar and flour, um, baking soda and your spice and a little bit of salt, and, and that's it. You just pour it over the peaches. You melt the butter in the pan in the oven, pour the peaches over the butter and then the batter, and that's it. You know what's great about this is you kind of get a little two for one. This is kind of like a cobbler and a cake together because you get a cake along with the cobbler and then the peaches. Mm -hmm. I mean, that, that's I love that. This would be great with a little ice cream. It's always good with ice cream. Also, um, uh, in England they have a, a custard sauce that you can mix that you can make a cut and it tastes really good with the custard sauce. Ooh, that sounds good. Well, Barbara, I want to tell you thank you for spending some time and cooking up some lunch for me. I'm gonna spend some time eating up the rest of this. Well, good. And I wanna tell you all out there that on the road with Noble Outfitters every week, we create these great recipes. You can get them online at Noble Outfitters slash RFDTV. Go there and get all the recipes from all of our shows and do some cooking and have some fun at home. Thank you very much for joining us and we'll see you again next week with On the Road with Noble Outfitters. Hello, I'm Dan Costa, the CEO of Noble Outfitters. Each week, we're gonna be featuring a local farm and feed store that has been the supply chain for all farms and ranches across this great country for hundreds of years. Each one of these stores has an amazing story to tell. Join us on Wednesday nights for a fantastic view of what's kept the farms and ranches supplied over the years. On the road with Noble Outfitters, right here on RFD-TV. I've had a wonderful time here in Tulsa, Oklahoma at Drysdale's Western Wear, and I can tell you, you, if you're ever near Tulsa, Oklahoma, get in here to Drysdale's and take a look at this beautiful store, the thousands of pairs of jeans and the thousands of boots. It's a wonderful experience. And Jim McClure creates a wonderful experience here for his customers. Jim, I want to thank you for having us visit. Thank you, Dan. Thank you very much. And I know you've got a special thank offer you, you want to talk to people about. We have a special about. offer that uh, you folks that are watching this can use. Go to drysdales.com and use the promotional code NOBLE and you'll receive 15% discount on Noble products on drysdales.com website. And that'll be for the next two weeks. So go to drysdales.com, put in the promotion code NOBLE and you'll get 15% off on all of our products here at Drysdales. We'll see you next week on On the Road with Noble Outfitters. If I keep eating like I've been eating, Jim, I'm gonna be, I'll be coming back for a pair of these. <laughs> Gotta have a beer mug with some horses on it. Love these little jeans. Oh.